evening on this very special broadcast is mr dinesh trivedi who's the former railway minister good evening sir it's a pleasure to have you today but we don't speak today on a very good evening Thank for you. the simple reason that hundreds of people have lost their lives in a in a very unfortunate accident your first thoughts on it sir i think the first thought always goes to the family those who have lost their near and dear ones and the whole country is in a state of sadness you me the honorable prime minister mentioned ke man ko vichlit karne wali durghatna hai uh, the priority is obviously now we can't get the people who have lost their lives but definitely we are standing by the family getting the victims who are uh, at the moment who are injured Uh, in the hospital getting the best treatment and making sure that the line gets to normalization hmm. thought people have been talking throughout the day there has been debate and rightly so but anusha i think today is a time to be with the family yes and i don't think so any one of us can get into any kind of conclusion hmm. as to what would have happened hmm. we need to wait till the inquiry report comes hmm. and then only we will know the honorable prime minister went on record hmm. ke kisi ko bhi baksha nahi jayega ji and railway is a great professional organization hmm. they will get into the depth of it now having said said that this reminds me of uh, this is such a freak accident i'll just take 2 minutes to complete uh, if, sure. if you have sure. the patience please sure. during 2010 a similar accident to place near kharagpur and i think the train name was ganeshwar i think mm. and and uh, 150 died yeah uh, almost yeah. passenger train getting derailed coach is going on the other track and a good strand ramming into it mm. inquiry report mention it very clear that it was a sabotage Today's incidents, when I look at it, it's very strange that there are three trains. One Coromandel, what we hear from the initial report or from the television, I can't tell for sure. That Coromandel went into the loop line. How did it go to the loop line? Unless and until somebody purposefully fiddles around with the electronic systems, which will make the loco pilot and the train itself. get into a loop line because unlike cars we do not have steerings loco pilot don't have steering right. to change they have to be on the track mm. and the track change takes place remotely mm. so who did it what was the purpose mm. and 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 the reason is if somebody i'm not getting into any conclusion mm. if somebody has played sabotage mm. then it was very well calculated that this is a time when the good strain will be there some other train so, will be coming so can i can i make a, with, a your, with your with your permission all i am suggesting yeah. i just conclude all i am suggesting is whoever is going to inquire high level should not in, ignore this fact because to me it looks very strange mm. and 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 talking about kavach ye wo there are important systems but that only comes into play if a loco pilot runs over the signal jumps the signal in this case i don't think so that has happened so uh, my angle is very simple sure. don't rule out anything and sir, let us wait for the report to come then only we discuss it so you you you've been the former railway minister you know the ministry in and out um and it's a very important point that i believe you're making with your experience and responsibility that you hold as a respected uh, former parliamentarian in this country that the act of sabotage is something that should not be ruled out i want to touch upon the second aspect of it i think after 1981 when a train fell into a river and about 750 people lost their life this is the worst tragedy that we have seen the death toll has now touched to 90 and unfortunately it's likely to go up i was speaking to some former railway officials just some time ago on the broadcast and two aspects they pointed out to me one was the modernization the maintenance of tracks that need to be done and certain situations in which super fast trains at a certain speed if there is a jerk and the speed is suddenly increased can lead to instances of derailment i completely agree with you that in the last one uh, one decade the instances of derailment have significantly come down 
But those two factors that were pointed out by the experts, one pertaining to the excessive speed on the track and second about the maintenance of the track, are they the plausible reasons? Perhaps could, could be, as and when the inquiry pans out to be, one of the causes to be considered, sir? Well, to my the best of the understanding at the moment, uh, precisely what I had mentioned in my budget, that we need a generational change mm. and not an incremental change. Mm. But unfortunately, we have always played politics with the railways and, and my budget was uh, not allowed to go the way I had presented. Mm. Having said that, now this government is spending 2,50,000 crore or more on the railways where I was crying for 50,000 crore. So, modernize and process is the priority. Safety is part of modernization process. Mm. In this case, when you talk about, uh, when you talk about that tracks were not good, yeah. how do we know that? Absolutely, yeah. How, if, if the initial report of uh, people if, if saying that it went into the loop line, how did it go into the loop line? Mm. And after going into the loop line, it, it derailed. So unless and until somebody fiddles around the electronic locking system, mm. to my mind, with little knowledge of the railways, right. it is very difficult to digest. Right. It is very, very difficult to digest. And the way things have happened, yeah. Uh, so I am not coming to any conclusion one way or the other, mm. but Honorable Prime Minister, like uh, during COVID, when every, everybody was crying hard, mm. he just put his head down and made sure that we give the best medical services to India, including the vaccination. Mm. And the world is today asking, how did India do it? Mm. So this Prime Minister is not going to sit quietly. Mm. He must be on the job. He will ensure that nothing of this thing can 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 be at at halt. There is no pause of modernization. Right. Modernization is an ongoing process, and this government under the prime minister is very serious about it. That is why I said that the angle of sabotage cannot be ruled out. I'm not coming to mm -hmm. a conclusion because everything to me looks very, very strange. So, um, uh, Indian Railways right now, under the present leadership, under the present government, you have presented budgets in the parliament. It's a facelift, a generational facelift that we're in the process of getting. The Vande Bharat trains, the high-speed trains, increasing the capacity and the speed of the trains, improving the quality of the travel experience. It's a new uh, you know, story that Indian Railways is narrating to the people in terms, of the, in terms of the development and also the experience that it offers to a traveler. Many these days prefer traveling by train instead of, instead of flights because of the good experience, punctuality and the safety standards. <laughs> Instances like these somewhere, once again, shake our faith that we have in the systems. What would you like to tell the people with that thought? But that is, precise, that is precisely the reason. Yeah. That we have, uh, don't think that uh, we do not have people who don't wish well for uh, the government. And we have seen in the previous uh, budget session and the other budget session, Parliament, they don't want Parliament to function. I'm not trying to blame any political party, but at the same time, we have uh, enemies all, all over uh, who, who cannot stand the development of India. And if you, the recent report also says that India is a bright spot in the world. So precisely that's why I said, to shake up the confidence of the people. Why? What happened to, in 93, the Bombay blast? Mm. So all I am suggesting not coming to a conclusion. Mm. My suggestion is one, that there is something strange has happened. I am not concluding. I, I, I Because get that, this yeah. way three trains getting involved and that is what I am suggesting. And I have full faith in this government, the Honorable Prime Minister and I do not have blind faith. We have seen during COVID and we have seen many such examples. So. Let us wait for the report to come out mm. and let us not get into any kind of conclusion. People have been talking about coverage. 
I don't think so. There is any any kind of reason to blame that Kavaj was there or not, because Kavaj only comes if you, like I said earlier, if you run over a signal light. Hmm. Uh, so, in conclusion, let's have faith. Let's wait. Today is the day of morning, and I'm sure uh, questions should be asked and will be asked. So, and proper replies will come. So my, my and I'm sure this will help in a learning process. My my last question to you, sir, before before you take leave. Um, uh, today, I'm heartened as a journalist and as a citizen uh, by two things. One, I saw the images of how there were hundreds of local people who just came with water of bottle and were trying to help the NDRF, SDRF, the people who are working on the ground, trying to give a water or a glass of water to the journalists who are reporting. Uh, these instances are also sometimes a reminder how the local people are the first port of call and how they've come together in this time of crisis. And the second bit is about a certain degree of political solidarity that we have seen. Uh, the state of Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, mm. Orisha are all opposition rule states. But despite that, there is an act of political solidarity and everybody recognizes this is a somber moment. There have been very muted calls and political criticism. Some said, you know, the railway minister should resign. How do you see this present moment in terms of the political solidarity? And is resignation really the answer in modern India as far as these instances are concerned? And I, I completely agree with you that accountability at the right time needs to be fixed. So that is the strength of India, that the local citizens of India, their heart goes out to the country and to the people. They don't look at which government, who's a passenger, who's where. They just, everybody reaches out to help. And that is a huge, huge strength of India. Mm. Now come to the politics of it. Asking for resignation of the Honorable uh, Railway Minister. Mm. I can only ask one counter question. Hmm. Can anybody guarantee any of the people who are asking for resignation that if the Honorable Minister Railway's concern resigns, hmm. would that guarantee that in future there will not be any sabotage, there won't be any kind of derailment, there won't be any accident? So I think this is precisely playing politics. And if they can guarantee, I'm sure the minister will not take one second to resign. So this is where I think we should just leave it to the system. Indian Railway is one of the best organization in the world. And Indian Railways has the best of the people in the world. Mm. I am very confident, like a student of the railways, I have studied the railways very closely. Leave it to the railways. And all these reports which will come out, will be totally professional and the truth will come out and like the Prime Minister said, Kisi ko bhi baksha nahi jayega. And we as uh, journalists will continue to ask questions and the right questions but I agree with you. Today is no, the day of today's, to today is the day of morning, sir, and I, I say a prayer for all the families who've been affected. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. Thank you for sparing your precious time and sharing your insights on that story.